going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. I am so excited today. We're picking up a Freightliner. A Freightliner Cummins 24 valve turbo diesel, baby. Yeah, it's an old FedEx truck. And I can't wait to show it to you. So in case you missed it on one of the last videos, here it is, a 2001 Freightliner. I think it's called like, it's a, I don't know what it's called, guys. It's a, it's a Freightliner. It's a 24 valve Cummins turbo diesel. It's a dually. It's an old FedEx truck. That's right. This is an old FedEx truck. The original pictures of it when it first came here, it had FedEx stickers all over it, just like the one next to it. Just like the one next to it. And if you look really, really closely, you can still see an X right here. FedEx. Yeah, it's a FedEx truck, guys. Super, super cool, in my opinion. Now, it was listed as a non-runner, so if you missed that Copart walk-around, then you missed a really good video, man. This is a Utilimaster. All right, it's got excellent tires all the way around. It's listed as a non-runner with no keys. Yep, no keys, non-runner. But there's a secret to this van. The secret is in here are keys. And in here is a special strap you're supposed to wear on your wrist to start it. You sit this thing here. Apparently this operates the doors. From what, I, from what I've been told in the comments, this should open this door because we couldn't get these doors open. The, this door nor the back door would open, but I guess you put that there or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna take the, we're gonna take the key here. We're gonna put the key in the ignition and we're gonna just turn it on. Now the batteries are bad. We learned that from the last video. But the batteries are located under the steps. It is a 12 volt system, not 24. And I decided to do the right thing today. You can jumpstart this with uh, one of my GB150 booster packs, okay? You are not, however, supposed to start it with one of the GB150 booster packs. They do not recommend that. They say if you're gonna be starting some big diesel, you should really use two. But I'm here to tell you right now, this thing will jumpstart this truck with no issue at all. I could do it again just to show you, but instead I think I'm just gonna do it the right way. They really do recommend, it puts unnecessary wear on your booster pack. So as you can see, it's stone cold dead. There's nothing. If there was any power at all, this thing would have already come to life. So hold the emergency button. There we go. She's got juice. All right, now we're gonna grab the other GB150. <laughs> and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna throw a positive over here. We're gonna throw a negative on the other side, and then we will have the appropriate uh, setup as far as uh, NOCO is concerned. We don't wanna, don't wanna cause any unnecessary wear or tear to, uh, to my booster pack. So there we go. Looks like we're sitting about 12 volts. You know what it's time for. We gotta fire this bad boy up, man. Cause we're driving it. That's right, we are, we are going to drive this out of here, assuming it'll drive. Now, one of the next cool things about this, let's bring you in a little bit on the odometer there. Can you see that? 181,000 miles? You're kidding me. 181 on a Cummins? <laughs> it runs. It runs. And you got a little fan right there, too. I think, uh, there you go. Look at that. A little fan to keep you cool. Okay. Well, she's a running. Why it does that, I'm not sure. But as soon as you put it in gear, it stops. Boy, she's loud. She's real loud. We got good oil pressure. We got a little bit of diesel. What say we take this bad boy on the road, man? See what happens. Well, she gave me a little bit of grief, guys. She died as soon as I took off the booster pack, so I'm just kind of letting it charge up a little bit. I want to show you something, though. Check this out. Uh-oh. Did you hear that? Now, the one inside, I can't get to do that. Uh, the one inside doesn't seem to work. I had somebody tell me that I was going to get sued 
see this one doesn't uh, this one doesn't work at all. Anyway, I had somebody tell me that I was going to get sued for showing you guys how to start and operate a FedEx truck. These are called like they call them a lot of things: uh, walk-through vans, uh, Utila Masters, whatever. They're all pretty much set up and designed the same way, regardless of the year. You'll see this one right next to it's a little bit newer. Uh, this one, mine's an 01, this is an 04, all right, but it's still very, very similar in nature. Uh, they look they look quite similar. A few little extras added in here, but it still has the, uh, the electronic locks. These are electronic as well. I'm not sure how you would, uh, if you locked them, I'm not sure how you'd get back in if you locked it from the inside or if you even could. Let's not, let's, let's not. But anyway, this right here is the key to everything, quite literally. It's a really cool uh, and very fashionable, I might add, little wrist strap. Jessica's in the Ram 2500, she's ready. And I think this thing is ready to go. Okay, I guess this is it, guys. Let's get it to the house. Then we'll go over a little bit more of it and we'll figure out how to get in those back doors. So I guess question number one is once you get it started, how do you drive it? Well, that's pretty simple. Yeah. I think that's that's off. That should be off. Your shifter is right here. And, uh, oh boy. Well, I think it's in reverse, but the speedometer is still going like 80 miles an hour. Yeah, it's in reverse. Now, I've never driven one of these other than, uh, obviously, a U-Haul truck or Penske truck or something like that. I've never actually driven one of these vehicles. And I'll be honest with you, this is a little bit different than driving a Penske or a U-Haul. <laughs> in fact, it's a lot different. Okay, we got her in drive, and it looks like oil pressure is good, voltage is good. The speedometer quit running around us. It does have power steering. Thank God. I couldn't I couldn't imagine driving one of these without power steering. We are about to find out, guys, if this thing has a transmission, a rear differential. Maybe we can uh, program and get it to roll coal. Oh, she is noisy. Look at all of these trucks out here, guys. I feel bad for them, man. The people that were in them I feel real bad. All right. Let's bring it around. We do have a uh, we do have a check engine light on. Does that really matter? I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. We got to do something back there to quiet it down a little bit. She, she's a little loud. She's a little loud back there, guys. You get the, you get the unofficial tour here, man. This is the side that most people don't even get to see out in this yard. They see that loader back there? That's John. <laughs> There's John back there. All right, guys. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna spare you the agony of riding through here. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna get out to the road and we'll continue this video there. This is awful. Moment of truth, guys. You ready for this? There we go. Hey, it shifts. It shifts. I've heard three gears so far. I don't know how many it's got. I think it's got five. Oh, wow. Damn, watch out for trees, guys. Uh, I just smacked the living hell out of the trees over there. <laughs> it's got three gears. That's all you need, man. You don't need more than three. <laughs> Let's take a look down at the dashboard there. She's 
doing all right. Everything looks good. Good oil pressure. Everything's looking nice. All right, guys. Let's get it out on the main road where we can actually get her up to speed. So you might be wondering, what's it like driving with no door? Yeah, it's just you and the road, man. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a little on the sketchy side, but the airflow is great. It's like you don't even need air conditioning in something like this, man. All right, here we go. Here's our opportunity. Let's get it. Come on, Cummins. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah yeah listen to her listen to that diesel baby yes oh man this thing is freaking awesome there's a cop right there oh no uh-oh oklahoma city police department let's let's keep going guys let's get it i'm here to tell you guys i have a newfound respect for delivery drivers oh, oh my goodness i how do you do it? How do you do it, man? This thing is just clunking, banging, clanking, rattling. It's awful. It is horrible driving one of these. I would never tell you this is a great, comfortable ride. It is not. This thing's like riding in something that was built for the damn military, man. <laughs> but you get a great view. Listen. Can you hear that turbo? Yeah, get out of my way, little Hyundai. I will run your ass over. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Guys, she's got gears. The brakes work. The rear end works. The transmission shifts. Take a look at the gauges here. We're going 40. No issues. I've gotten it to kick into overdrive one time. There you have it, man. I'm going to continue on my way. And uh, we'll work our way back to the house. See how it does all the way there. Can you hear how loud this thing is? Oh my gosh. I wonder if that's the back door or all the crap bouncing around in the back shelves and stuff. I don't know. Can you even hear me? If you can hear me, it's a damn miracle. Good Lord. This is... Uh, it drives very well though like steering and braking and everything like it, it really is great to drive it drives really really well it's just all that damn rattling clunking and banging in the back it literally gives you a, a headache i almost I almost went left on you it, it it starts to give you a headache after a while i mean you look forward to just sitting at an idle and listening to that beautiful cummins turbo diesel Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> I love some of the stupidest vehicles. This is one, man. I love this thing. I love this thing. All right, all right. Here we go. Turn that corner, Bertha. Big Bertha right there. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Ho ho! She's got a little get up and go. She does. She really does. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed, guys. We're gonna keep on keeping on. I'll see you guys in just a minute. So I gotta ask you guys something. Have you ever wanted something, but you didn't know you wanted it until you had the opportunity to actually have it? How many of you have been out and, and driven a U-Haul or a Penske truck, right? You've driven a moving truck. Most of us have, I think. And I bet nobody ever sat there and thought, you know, I really want one of these. I'd really love to have one of these. I, I'm pretty sure nobody has ever said that. Well, guys, I'm here to tell you, you might want to rethink one of these trucks, guys. Uh, I really would have never thought that I wanted something like this until I had the opportunity to actually buy it. And now I've got it. There it is. There it is. Everything is still doing good. I'm happy. She's cruising. Let's get down the road. All right, so who had any doubts that a Cummins with an Allison behind it would make it? Anybody doubt it? I didn't doubt it for a minute. Okay, yeah, I did. I really did. I, I really did. I was like, oh, man. You guys wondering what I paid for this bad boy? You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to crap yourself now. 
So if you don't know what these go for, let me tell you, this exact truck, exactly like it is, like exactly this way, this exact truck sells for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars all day, any day of the week. Don't believe me? Look it up. Look up a two thousand one Freightliner Utilimaster. All right, go find one of these, and then come back to the video. Yes, this is a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar truck all day long. Now, what did I pay for it? Oh, you're gonna die. You're gonna die when I tell you what I paid for it. I won the bid at $4,350. $4,350. Out the door, $5,175. I'm not BSing you. I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. This truck out the door was $5,175. I am I'm blown away. I, no, no, squirrel. Damn. He got by me. Woo, Jessica almost rear-ended me, but that's okay because we saved the squirrel. <laughs> we saved the squirrel from imminent death. All right, well... Here it is. We made it. Now, you already know why I bought it. I'm gonna sell my Ram 2500 and this gonna be my new workhorse. Do you believe me? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. All right, so I'm gonna leave her running for a minute. Let's hop out. I told you guys we were gonna try to get in the back, right? Well, let's see what's going on back here. Uh, somebody that used to work for uh, FedEx told me how to use these and you know, it's pretty simple. There you go. And I guess you turn the handle and... Uh-oh. Let's try that again. No? Hell, I don't know, man. Does that have to seal? Well, I don't know what that means, man. Dang it. You can hear the lock. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. First look at what's in the back. There it is. Yeah, she got a little damage. And I know it actually probably looks worse on camera than I think it really is. The frame is nice and straight, guys. Just a bunch of aluminum. Uh, I may see if Santa's workshop isn't too busy. If we might be able to uh, enlist his assistance and maybe being able to you know, knock this out a little bit, try to straighten it up some. I mean, I ain't looking for perfection or anything like that, but at least kind of, you know, just try to beat it back where it's somewhat straight. What's up, dog? Sugar, what are you doing? What are you doing, huh? Huh, huh? Oh, you ready to go home? You want to go in this truck? Nope, she wants nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Unfortunately, since the bumper is missing, this is a little harder to climb up inside of. But here we go. Well, there's the bumper. Damn. Damn. Wow. Boy. Uh, whoever hit this, that hurt. That hurt. Uh, here's what we got inside, though. We got lots of shelving. Some of this stuff. I don't know. Some kind of bungee cord type deal. Oh, we got a spare tire. Oh, it's got air in it, too. It's got air in it. Is this a steer tire? Oh crap, that is heavy. That is a steer tire, yeah. Good year, she looks to be in pretty damn good shape. Let's see if we can open this door. This is what I, I think you push this. Ah, there we go. Aha, we did it. We finally got the doors open. So whoever that was that told me about that, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. You got some, uh, is it Taco Bell? That's a Taco Bell, you got a, some kind of rod there that you beat on something with, I guess. A safety vest, some gloves, a beer. No, I'm kidding, that's a monster. Water bottles. What is this, a book? There's a book back here. What is this? Uh-oh. A little book, oh, there's nothing in it? Nothing in it, damn. 
All right, well, anyway, the top, for those of you wondering, the top actually appears to be in pretty damn good condition. Let's back you guys up a little bit here. There you go, take a look at the top. The roof looks good, guys, she really does. All the way back, the sides look good. It's a little beat up, but I'm thinking for me though, I don't really need these shelves. I know they fold. Oh, that's what. Okay, 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 hold on now. We might keep the shelves. I didn't know that you could fold them up and put this thing under them. Okay, that changes the game a little bit. These shelves fold up, so if you want them out for something, you can have them out, but if you want them put up, they'll they'll go up. What does this do? I wonder if that's a like a security alarm. Being robbed, being robbed. Um, Courier International Reference Guide. I don't know nothing about that either. Do not drop or throw. But hey, that's, yeah, that's good. This vehicle has a maximum payload of 6,000 pounds. Do not overload. And then vehicle load diagram. It kind of shows you how you're supposed to load the vehicle up. Do these fold up too? Nope, that one does not. This does though. So this, 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 and this all fold up. These ones over here do not. I don't know, man. I don't know. Do you think I got a good deal for 5,000 bucks considering it runs and drives? Like, it really does, guys. She runs and drives. What is this? This is an E2SO box stop count. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but still, whatever. Whatever. Do you guys think it was a good deal for $5,000? Um, we'll pop the uh, engine cover off real quick. We'll take a... Uh, hold on. Come on. There you go. Hey, listen to that. Listen to that. Woo! That sounds like a solid Cummins, baby. Listen to how good that thing purrs. There's your turbo right there. sounds healthy no leaks that I've been able to find so far anyway she's a she's a solid unit guys yeah I'll put that back later let's come over here we'll pop the hood because some of you maybe have a seat if you're wondering why I've got it sitting here running well I got it running because I'm trying to charge up those batteries I don't know if you know this but diesel batteries are very very expensive and I don't want to replace them if I don't have to so there is under the hood, man. This is everything that makes the old girl work. Look at that gearbox. Look at that gearbox. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do suspension work on this if I don't have to. There's your air intake right there. Massive, isn't it? Charge pipe. There's an alternator down there somewhere, right there. That's your alternator. Not sure where the air compressor is, but you can see it's got a new condenser as well. So somebody had worked on the air conditioning. There's the compressor right there. Right there she is. Why don't we turn on the air conditioning? I'm curious to, curious to see if the AC works. I heard it, that sounds like it works. I heard it kick in. That's just going to be wild if the AC works, guys. Here's all the all the gauges. Everything is still good. Temp is getting up there a little bit, but, I mean, she is sitting here idling, so... Not really too surprised about that. And the other thing that concerned me about this from the beginning is the fan. You guys see the fan? It's probably hard to locate, but right there, that's a fan blade. There's another one right here. Right there's a fan blade. This thing is nice and hot, and that fan is not spinning. Also notice the AC clutch is not spinning either. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, number one, the uh, cooling fan clutch does not work. Number two, the AC does not currently have a charge on it. Let's go ahead and set this brake. Let's shut it off. I don't want this thing to get hot. Oh, yeah, you got you to gotta push the stop button. There you go. Oh, that's better. That's a lot better. What do you think? Dead as a doornail? Yeah. Damn it. 
Well, I can't wait to price batteries for this bad boy. All right, so now we're waiting on a couple things. That back end does look kind of bad, doesn't it? I, I think we'll be able to, to put something back there, make it look a lot better, I really do. At least the door still works. It didn't seem to affect anything else. Like I said, good tires. It runs and drives great. Tire tread back here is probably running a little thin, but you know, not too bad. Steer tires are in excellent shape, really nice. 225 70R. 19 by 19.5 okay 19.5 interesting boy i don't want to change tires on this i'll tell you that <laughs> this doesn't look like it's fun to change tires on those things are massive guys yeah so anyway i'm waiting on austin from austin car on youtube definitely go check him out he is the interstate battery expert and guess what these batteries are these are interstate batteries it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see back there, sort of. Yeah, these are interstate batteries. So I'm waiting on Austin to tell me. <laughs> uh, I just can't wait to hear what the price for commercial batteries are. Uh, yeah, I'll be sure to let you guys know that here in just a, just a second. But for now, uh, I have to go pick up another vehicle. I won something else today. I got to go pick it up. So we'll return to this video here in just a moment guys i want to give a big shout out real quick yeah we still got the truck here don't worry we're about we're about to get back to that i'm having problems with it but i want to give a big shout out to tramel over here from on the spot detailing guys you just got you a shop yeah i just got me a just shop. got you a shop up in Edmond. that's huge yeah it's pretty huge i've been working on it for a few years and stuff like that so i finally got it and so you guys can break it down when you, uh, yeah Where, where's it at it's off 722 northwest 86th street okay uh, Sweet C. Okay. It's in uh, Oklahoma City area. Okay. And listen, I didn't get it. I, this isn't sponsored. He's still charging me to, to clean my truck. <laughs> He's still charging me my truck. But anyway, I'm going to give you his info right here, guys. He's on Facebook, Instagram, Google+. There's his number. Give him a holler here. I'll show you real quick. He No, I don't want to. People are going to see the truck and be like, he didn't clean a damn thing. Well, I didn't ask him to do anything on the outside, guys. We've had some bad weather. There's no point in cleaning the outside. But... The inside was absolute. I don't. I I should have done before and after, but I'm kind of embarrassed. It's Can you tell them it was embarrassing? Uh, Would well, you show that to your subscribers? I mean, it was. It you know we bring our dog in here and stuff, and it hadn't been clean since we bought it. And I'm here to tell you, man, he made this sucker. It looks new again. I'm. I'm. I honestly did not expect all that dog hair to come out neither. It, 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 guys, this thing was covered in dog hair. You know how dogs are. Look at that. Look at that. The seats have marks in them because we never have them down. The seats are always up so we can put our dog back here. And I mean, this, all of this was full of dog hair. He made this thing look great. So shout out again, Tramel from On The Spot Detail, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Another underdog coming up. Yeah, I'm coming up. Another underdog yes, coming up, guys. Go hit him up if you're in anywhere out here. You service and you do mobile detailing, obviously. Yeah, we do mobile detail. You know, we set appointments or so whatever you need, whether it's at your uh, car, house, or shop, your job, whatever. We just come yeah. there, watch it no matter what. So you could be at work, which is why I love you guys, because I can be inside editing videos and you can show up. By the time I'm done with some videos, you're done. Yeah, I'm done. So. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about power, water, or nothing like that. Nope. So we just He's got all of it. I'm here to tell you, man. Definitely give it, give him a holler if you need some detail. Because they service just about everywhere out here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how far how far do you go? I travel up to two hours. Oh, whew. <laughs> up to two hours from the Oklahoma City metro yeah. area. That that covers a lot of Oklahoma. Yes, that covers a lot of... Yeah, give him a, sh give him a shout, guys, if you need anything done. Jermel, I appreciate you, man. All thank right. you, as always. I know he's got to get out of here. He's got another He's got another appointment. But thank you, man. I appreciate you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Take it easy. All right. So the problem that we're having with the truck, <laughs> it's a new day, obviously, is I think this thing is going dead or something. Um, it's not working like it was. And I tried earlier to get the truck started. You'll notice the batteries are gone. I took the batteries out um, because Austin from Austin Car is on his way with some new ones. Um, I cannot get this thing to uh to start i don't know what happened i'm gonna open that now they're not supposed to start with the doors open so i don't know if if that's a problem but i mean we have started this with the door the doors open before so let's see what happens okay <laughs> are you kidding me does it even need this i i, I don't know let's try that again 
Okay, it does. So it doesn't have to have this. All right, let's let's try it with this alone and watch this. I'll take the key out. Okay, I'll take the key out. We'll throw the key over there. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay, it runs. Look at the look at this right here, though, guys. This is concerning. All right, you see the miles down there counting 66.4? It thinks we're going 70 miles an hour, 66.5. Yeah, she thinks 66.6. She thinks that we're sitting here going 70 miles an hour. We're not moving. Check engine light on immediately, and I can't find a diagnostic connector for this. You'd think there'd be like an OBD port or something. Nope. I can't find it. So I'm going to go ahead and climb down real quick, bring you guys with me here. I'm going to look under here, and I'm looking for, you know, oh, here's the diagnostic port right here. There it is. That is a Freightliner diagnostic port, which means I need a special tool to do a diagnostic on this. Lovely. Let's go back to the door here. I want to see if this uh, lock works today, because it wasn't working. No. No. I don't think this is working at all now. You see the way it just it just flashes? Ugh. What a pain in the ass. So I guess the question is is how the hell do you open the door? Right? I mean if the uh, if the lock isn't working and it's it's just an electromagnetic lock it's nothing particularly fascinating um but how do you make it work well there's a couple things you can do there's a button right here boom just like that hey got your little little button right there it activates the electromagnetic lock for five seconds Boom, then it closes. Next, if that doesn't work, <laughs> you gotta find a tool to get in here between the door and you gotta push that back or you can take a screwdriver and just push this back right here until it opens and you get the rollers out of the way. Uh, that's the only way to do it, unfortunately. And you can see, I'll take this, uh, I'll take this device here and I'll put it up on this and what it should do is it should pop this lock. And I heard it do, I heard it click, but it didn't actually do anything. Nah, it's not working. So I don't know what that means. I don't know why it's not working. This is the, this is a controller for all of those mechanisms. Uh, it all, this also is not working on the, uh, on the front door over here either. Let's see if I can climb out of here without falling and busting my ass here. Uh, there's another one of these right here, uh, Stratec, and this doesn't do anything. Yeah, this doesn't, this doesn't do anything at all. And you can see there used to be one over here as well. Uh, apparently that got removed. They just got rid of it. <laughs> it's, it's gone. Um, I'm not even sure if there's any wiring under there. They used to plug into it left. Yeah, I don't know. I also found these. These are kind of cool switches that I don't know what the hell they do. Right here. Let's see if I can get you guys in there. Idle increase and decrease. Doesn't seem to do anything. And then there's this engine check. Now, I don't know how the hell that works either, but that button also doesn't seem to do anything. Yeah, I don't know. If anybody has any insight into how some of this stuff works, please, please holler at me. Let me know. Um, I'm very interested to learn a little more. Like, what exactly do I need to run a diagnostic on this? I already lost the damn diagnostic port that was sitting under here somewhere. But anyway, that little connector I showed you earlier, 
is is just missing or i'm looking right at it and i don't realize it like what do i need to diagnose this thing or can i do it using this check engine button and if if you can can someone tell me how how do you how do you work that I'm, I'm very curious. There's a lot of things about this truck that I just don't know, I don't understand, and I would love to learn more about it. So if you got any information on it, you can comment it down below, or you can send me an email, autoauctionrebuilds at gmail.com. Look at this, we're at 72 miles now, and we haven't moved. 72 miles, we haven't moved. Um, my next question is this uh, Strat Tech. What happens if the battery dies, right? Like. Can someone tell me, can you get another one of these? Um, if you can, where do you buy these? Can you replace the battery? If you can, how do you do it? And then I guess the next question is, um, how do you reprogram this? Like if I buy a new wristband, and back in the day, these were replaceable for $20. You $20, you could replace it. You could purge all of the wristbands out of this system and you could program brand new ones. That much I know for a fact. What I don't know is how do you purge the system? How do you program new wristbands? How does this stuff work? Somebody's gotta tell me, guys, please. If you know anything about it, definitely tell me down below or email me, autoauctionrebuilds at gmail.com. So I wanna take a look under the hood real quick because there's some things that I would like to know how to do myself and I think I could do some, I think there's some maintenance I could do on this myself and there's other things that because I just don't know enough about diesels, you know, I could use a little bit of assistance on. For example, this air filter right here, okay? That's your air filter. Can someone tell me how the heck you change it? How do you change the air filter? I mean, I see that we got like a, a strap right here. All right, so does this somehow, you loosen this strap and this just slides off, or down here, it's got like a banjo fitting. Do you just take that off and slide the whole thing off? And even then, how do you get to the cartridge filter inside? It hasn't been changed since October 2020. It was a year ago. Probably needs a new one. Over here, it's got like air filter service instructions. I think there's supposed to be a, a gauge on here to let you know when your air filter is getting dirty. Yeah, that's gone. And now someone, <laughs> someone put a vacuum cap over it. Yep, that's a fact. You got your little turbocharger over there. All right, she's looking nice and pretty. And another thing I really like about this truck is it doesn't leak anything. Look underneath here, guys. There's the oil pan, like the transmission. There is nothing leaking under this truck. It is dry as a bone. Um, I guess my next question is, down here, is that an oil filter or is that the trans filter? Because I've seen conflicting statements online and on YouTube videos that this thing right here that white filter, I have seen people saying that that is a trans filter. That to me looks like an oil filter. I'm relatively certain that is an oil filter, but I could be wrong. So somebody definitely please comment below and, and confirm one way or another for me. Next, uh, I know that this is a fuel filter, okay, Fleet Guard. Right, it even tells you what filter you need to get for it. You take this cap off and there's a filter in there, a little cartridge filter you change, and you got your water separator right here too. Okay, if you look right here, lift this up. Oh, she's a little clogged. There you go. Lift that up, just a couple seconds is all you need. That lets the water out of your separator here and uh, keeps your diesel engine running good. Now on some of these trucks, I've noticed that there is another filter that sits kind of downstream from that one, somewhere over here around the lift pump. And it's got like a bowl, a clear bowl over the top of it. Unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case on this truck. So I guess that is the only fuel filter that this truck has. Next, ow, I just hit my back. Next is this fan. And it's hard to, boy, it's hard to, really get you guys in there. Um, that's about as good as I can get you. This fan, look how loose this is. Look at that. It just spins freely. And I'm here to tell you, even after the truck is nice and warm up to operating temperature, that fan never spins, never. Now, how do we change that? <laughs> hey, I've never done this before. 
uh, on a big truck like this. I know that the cowling obviously has to come off, and I'm guessing the fan just Ugh, I'm guessing the fan just comes off the front. So I'm assuming you remove the cowling, right? And maybe lay it towards the motor and then pull your fan out. Or do you actually have to take the radiator out to get to it? I don't know, but I'd like to fix that fan. Although I will say this thing has yet, as I've driven it, it has yet to get warm, hot, nothing of the sort. Um, the temperature's never gone up. So I assume that's only probably for really hot days when you're sitting idling for a very long time. But those are some things that I'd like to know. And also, what's the process for servicing the transmission? Um, what kind of fluid does it take? What kind of filter? Uh, those are good things though. Coolant, what type of coolant do you use on a truck like this? These are things I'd like to know because ultimately I would like to be able to do some of the servicing on this truck myself. Now, real quick, I kind of set things up so I could take a look at the fluids with you guys, because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, what do the fluids look like? Well, you tell me, how does that look for antifreeze? I think that looks, that looks pretty damn good. That looks pretty damn good. Next, transmission. Now, I don't know what color Freightliner, or I think this has an Allison transmission. I believe this is a, a 24 valve Cummins with an Allison automatic behind it. And what is the transmission fluid supposed to look like? Well, here it is. You tell me, how does that, uh, how does that look? Oh, use Dextron 3. Well, now we know what kind of trans fluid it takes. Um, since it takes traditional Dextron, I can tell you that's a little on the dark side. Not horrible. It's definitely not the worst I've seen, but I'd say that's probably due for a service. So that's something uh, that's something I definitely want to look into, is making sure that transmission is serviced as well, well as the rear differential. Next, let's take out the oil dipstick. Let's see what... Oh, uh, she's a little low. She's a little low. Not much, but... Uh, yeah, a little low. Let's wipe that over here and see what that looks like as well. I mean, diesel oil always looks nasty, guys. Always looks. It looks like looks like ash. That's <laughs> what looks like. It's pretty pretty bad, but not uncommon for a diesel. I'm used to that. All right. What about brake fluid? Power steering fluid. Obviously, we got a massive brake reservoir here. Uh, warning, clean cap. No, we're just not going to do that. Can you guys see down in there? Can you see in there? Let's see. Oh, it's clean. That's very clean brake fluid. Okay, good deal. Power steering fluid. I'm pretty sure that's what this is, right? Pretty sure that's power steering fluid. Oh, wow. Ah. Yeah, it looks like Dexron in there. Looks like she's got plenty. So, <laughs> um, not bad, guys. Not bad. If you're going to work on the diesel, I guess you got to get used to getting your hands dirty because there ain't nothing clean about a diesel. What if we could make this thing roll coal? Did I say that already? I probably said it at the beginning of the video. I think it'd be so cool to either put a smokestack running up the side of it or since the exhaust down here just run the... <laughs> Run the exhaust like right out the side somewhere, man, or right out the side over there. So when you get next to a Prius or... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never do that. Would I? I don't... Well, no, I'd never do that, guys. It's not me. So we've got Austin Carr here. He brought us some batteries because without batteries, this thing ain't going to run. We got batteries. What do you think of her? It's different. I'm not used to something so large. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, that's probably exactly <laughs> what she said. Hey man, did you watch uh did you watch that race? Which one? Uh FBK Racing where he took out uh Vice Grip Garage. Oh, okay. I've watched some of that the Danger Ranger 9000. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen some of that. I'm stuff. curious, man, cuz I got an opinion. I'll, I'll give that in a second. Mm -hmm. What what Okay, so uh, officially he won. Yes. Officially, he won. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? You think that was right or wrong? So, I mean, we we did see some of the guys racing really down low on the apron. Yep. So, I don't blame him for racing down low on nope, the apron. Nope, not at all. Now, could he have possibly driven a little bit better? Absolutely. Mm. But, I mean, when it's racing, it's racing. It's always for the cup at the end, right? 
So now, and that's then, how Earnhardt Sr. did it. <laughs> been a little dirty, maybe just a little dirty, but I mean, he was racing down low like some of the other, other guys were. I believe Cletus was racing down low as well. It's his yeah, track. yeah, yeah. He so, was I mean, he was between the apron and just a little bit further in, I, but yeah, I he raised pretty he low was too. Completely in the wrong. I mean, they were all on top of each. Other. Yeah. Well, there's how many 40, 40, oh, 40, 40 I trucks? Think I think 30, is what it was. Thirty-five plus. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, that's that's going to be crowded, and something's bound yeah. to happen. And the uh, the second place winners are actually a small YouTube channel that I had started following before they went to the race and. After seeing what they did to their truck, I was like, there's a possibility they could win this. <laughs> uh, I actually, I shouted them out way before that race was. I'm surprised more people didn't go and join them. Yeah. I mean, get them in while they're nice and small, and then... Uh, well, we need know. to get a, a FedEx Danger Danger FedEx 9000 race. I'll come out there, and <laughs> I'll tell you something. I, when I saw those guys, and I mean, they're, they're real proud of themselves for winning, but I'm telling you what, have you seen their comment section? I've heard it's pretty dirty. It's pretty bad. It, it, I mean, you can't take out a million plus subscriber YouTuber and and walk away. And so here here's my thing, okay? As a fellow YouTuber who doesn't have a million subscribers, but I've got three hundred twelve thousand. There's there sometimes you should just lose. Yeah. Just, some you some know. sometimes you really should because he won and and he's proud he won and all that yeah. i watched him run into cletus for for like early on like almost as soon as the race started he gets in there and cletus made it very clear so this is not a demolition derby he said we're not turning it into one don't be acting crazy out there don't yeah. wreck your trucks he was very specific yeah and this guy started the race aggressive yeah, people, yeah. very aggressive and i do agree it is a race it it's a race. race but at the same time you don't have to be hitting people he I, if i remember right he re he rear-ended cletus yeah i'm almost certain I he think, he I made contact yeah. okay so he hits cletus in the back and it's like of all the people to really go up against the dude that's <laughs> on the race he maybe cletus ain't the guy you should be hitting that, and then you're you're the special invited guest again yeah. Vice Grip Garage. Yes. I mean, it, it's one of those you kind of have to be careful because, again, you're thinking that you're at this big race. Thousands and thousands yes. and thousands of people are going to watch this. Millions on YouTube. So, I mean, you should probably play it a little bit slow and still, like, try to win, but play it of a course. little slow and not try to That's how I feel about it, man. Long, I you know watched I mean? him rear end Cletus and then immediately pass Cletus and bump him on the side. And I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? Yeah. And then he goes after Vice Grip Garage. And at, now, I'll be honest with you, when I saw Vice Grip Garage's video, mm -hmm. I thought it was Vice Grip Garage's fault. I thought Derek was at fault for that. Mm -hmm. Because I was watching his eyes, and Derek was not looking in his side mirror to see what was happening oh, in the apron he's lane. looking for that. Right, he's going straight ahead. And I was like, well, he didn't pay attention. He must have drifted over in front of the guy. But when I saw, who is it racing? FBK? Yeah. FBK Racing. When I watched his video, I'm looking... And I see, it looks like Derek maintained his lane very well. Yeah, continued his line around. And this there. guy kind of went straight into him yeah. and took him out. And I was like, oh, dude. That, that was pretty, it looked dude. Like a pretty brutal. Like, yeah. I'm surprised Derek was so cool about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how true this is. Again, I, from the few things I heard, supposedly that truck went back over and it could have been driven again. I know that with uh, James, or what most people call him, Vice, or uh, Jack Stan Jimmy on yeah. Cletus's channel, he that truck rolled, and then he continued to drive the rest of the race after they rolled it back. Over. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> man. For the most part, I thought it was entertaining. Oh yeah. I just I don't I, I think I think as a as a YouTuber, that's a race I would have lost intentionally after that. I I, I would have you know if, even if I come in fourth place or something, or just place, I would have backed know. off. Place Be top ten. Yeah, because now. He's like, yeah, he won, and he's proud of it, well, and that's great. But he's got the spotlight on him. <laughs> but but you, this ain't in a good way. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> have, you had the winning spotlight on you now, whether it was a good reason or a bad reason. Yeah, you have the spotlight on you. He could have he could have intentionally backed off and and lost a little bit, mm -hmm. and 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 maybe been able to regain some respect by saying, hey. Yeah. I apologize, yeah. even if he didn't feel like it was his fault. You know, apologize, say, look, I'm sorry that things happened the way they happened. My apologies. And he could have... And it looks... I had actually just come across one of their videos earlier today where they were apologizing. Oh, we're, okay, uh, I didn't see on, that. On I didn't camera, see that. they apologized. I didn't see it that. Was him, and I believe it's his father. Okay, they were yeah, apologizing, yeah. And they said they probably could have driven a little bit better. 
Yeah. I mean, they could have yeah. driven quite a bit better. <laughs> I, but, I, I agree with that. Could have drove a little bit better, I think. In, in the end, you won the race. You put yeah. the spl spotlight on you. Whether it was good or bad, you're still going to get it. Oh, yeah, it's no done. What, it's done now. It was good or bad. Yeah, it's done now. Games. It's done now. Well, I had, I had to ask. I know that people are going to be sitting here. Did we really just listen to six minutes and then talking about somebody else's? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you really just yeah. did. Or you fast forwarded. And, <laughs> and that's not cool. Fast forwarding is never cool. Yeah. Um, Dude, I checked this thing out earlier, man, and she is in tip-top shape. Trans fluid is good, coolant's bright pink, it's just, uh, brake fluid's clean. It's uh, dusty. Pa it's real, well. I mean, it really is just, it looks like it did some back road, country road. I think it did. Hauling. I, mean, I, I, yeah. It's pretty dusty. And we Wait, are, it, have it, you put, you haven't put batteries in it yet, um, have you? I don't know. Oh, we're halfway done. We didn't start it. No, I wasn't gonna even. I wasn't trying to have you put the batteries in. I could have done it myself, man. No, have you ever put batteries in one of these before? Actually, no. Really? I have not. Your first, and you figured it out? Now I know how these work because they're the same as the motorhome starting batteries. Yeah. Like the pusher motorhome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Same way. Same deal. So all the cables. They, I mean, this was one of the most simplistic setups that I've seen. It's all zip tied, wired how it should. <laughs> right. Super easy. <laughs> you just lift this bracket up, man, and once it's on, oh, you yeah. know, I, I had it all taken apart already. Oh, yeah, it was super easy. Yeah, you just lift it up, and and on the old interstate batteries that I got, those handles they didn't work. No. No, no. I tried to pull it out by the handle because those batteries are they're heavy. Yeah. Those are <laughs> fifty five pounds a piece. <laughs> those are heavy bat batteries. So I went to pull the battery out with the handle, and the handle snapped off. And I was like, okay, so I tried the second battery's hand. It snapped off. Snapped too. off, yeah. Yeah, so there's little uh, little pockets on the side. Yeah, yeah right there. Mm -hmm. And that's the better way. Look, you even put the caps. Oh, when, yeah. I, when I bought the truck, it didn't even have caps on. <laughs> it was Supposed wide open. Put the caps back on. Wide open. Now, it, I mean, it runs like it, it runs and drives perfect, man. Nice. Perfect. Haven't had it up to highway speeds yet. I mean. But I've had it 40, 45. That's not bad. And aside from some loud rattling, rattling. from the door and stuff in the back. I, I did, I was telling Nick one thing. I was like, be careful. You don't want to drive around with that. Oh, uh, no. No, might, no, no, no. That requires get, a special license. You might get in a little bit of trouble there. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got to have a special license to display that sign. Don't go anywhere near the uh, Air Force Base. No. <laughs> no. I've had people asking me, like, do you have to have a CDL or some kind of special license no. for this? And it's like, no, you don't. Nope. No, you don't. It's not big enough. It's not heavy enough to require a CDL. Otherwise, FedEx would be in trouble. Yeah, even yeah, Nick could drive. Yeah, even, even look, he, he's red. He, Nick loves this thing. Dude. <laughs> he was telling he, me. He loves this. And what's interesting, this was at Dealer Auto Auction. Mm. So, and it was at, D so I've got the title in the house. This was at Dealer Auto Auction uh, 9-8 of 21. That's not that long ago. Now, it had no keys, but if you look on the other side, even though Copart had it listed as non-runner, uh, it didn't have keys, no keys, but run and drive. So at dealer auto auction, they knew that that bracelet is what starts uh, the truck. You don't need keys. That bracelet is your entry into the vehicle. Somebody's, somebody's for a company. So they what, know some stuff. What I think is wild though, is this just came off from FedEx. Like I've got the title, mm -hmm. FedEx just let it go in August, the end of August, FedEx retired it. So did they sell it or did they put they it sold in the it. auction? They sold it and it went to a, uh, like a fleet rental company. So they were probably renting this truck out to somebody that was doing like Amazon delivery. Then it got in an accident. Somebody rear-ended it. And you know, bash in the rear end, which it, it's still perfect. You could have frame is straight. Yeah, you frame just it straight. just needs another bumper. Mm -hmm. Even the bumper shocks are still good on it. Yep. You could put a bumper back on this and beat out the rear end a little bit, you know. And and she would be good to go mechanically. The damn thing, it doesn't leak a drop of anything. The alignment's good. The tires are good. You could have continued using this for another million miles. Probably. But they decided to retire it. And I think it's crazy that they sold it to me because these are at a, at a minimum 15,000 and it's clear title. It's not salvaged. Wow. This is not a salvage. This is not a rebuilt. This is a clean title. And this thing sold for 4,350 to me. That's crazy. This is a 15 to $20,000 truck. It sells you look these things up anywhere, I could they're see 15 this, to 20 grand. I could see this thing being sold for 10 grand easy. Oh, easy. Easy. So I talked to Michael, Santa's workshop, yep. and I said, man, you got the welder. I said, I need to come over and holler at you. We need to see what we can do about maybe fabricating the back bumper. 
or unless I can find one, I haven't really tried to find one. But it's like maybe we could fabricate some cool, you know, yeah. back yeah, bumper. Yeah. And I told him I think it'd be real fun to take this exhaust from the downpipe and move it. I don't know where. Maybe, maybe bring it out here. Right out the side. And like a kind of like yeah, just either do a stack. I was trying to decide whether to just cut a hole so that you could blow up, you know, blow soot on the Priuses. Uh, you know, like right out the side, like like right here, maybe <laughs> right here. Get up next to him, just. Wham, wham, roll coal on them. It doesn't roll coal yet, but we might be able to. There, there might be some uh, something to richen it up a little bit. Possibly, it's illegal, so I would never do that. But if it if it was mechanically malfunctioning, possibly it it would do that from a malfunction. Yeah, you just got to be careful, right. with, You know, you know, getting it. Uh, what what do I call it? Running away. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want it running away. But you we were thinking about doing a couple cool things to it. But first, the the batteries are absolutely top priority it's also got this thing and i don't know what this is either huh some kind of tracking device i hope they're not tracking us i don't <laughs> it's it's cock uh cognosos hmm. and there's the info right there you know it's it obviously tracks because this light blinks hmm. okay <laughs> and it was attached to the driver's door thing right here just sitting there i wonder if it's a security thing or if it is like a main office thing i don't know this thing I was reading online, it's supposed to be set up with motion detectors in the cab and uh, up here and in the cargo area, and it will not start. It it is sound an alarm. It's supposed to sound an alarm if it detects motion. It's also not supposed to start with the doors open. But it does. But somebody's obviously managed to rig oh. that up. So what I was talking with Nick was he said there was a lot of dirt in here. If it was a yeah. if it was a country road truck, it's hot as heck in Oklahoma doors have to be open there's no air yeah. conditioning it's only it's heat. got air conditioning oh i thought it was only heat. no it's got ac and it yeah oh, it's got ac this thing's fancy yeah <laughs> this one's but i'm guessing that they weren't you probably using the ac very much ac doesn't work right now it's got a new condenser too hmm. someone just they someone just put a new condenser the thing is still freshly painted i think it's just out of freon so i'll, I'll be putting some freon in it once i get it down to to ar headquarters I appreciate it, Austin. Those batteries were 200 and, I don't remember, 250 I got the invoice. Somewhere. $255? Something like that. Fairly expensive batteries, but honestly, for what this vehicle is, it's really not that bad. That's really not bad for commercial, you know, grade batteries. I think usually they're about 240 to 250 bucks a piece. A piece? Yep, so you'd be looking about 300 something. Ooh, so we get 250 you a little, ain't, 250 bit ain't bad at all. They're right, 250 is not bad at all. Nick, you want to start it? You remember, you got, you got the, the wristband thing? Uh, let him use the key. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, the right. keys. The key's right, uh, I think the key's right there by, or it's up there. It's a big key. It's a real big key. Yeah, put it in, but don't turn it all the way. You turn it one click, and there'll be a light on the dash. Go ahead and turn it one click. Is it all the way in? Yeah, you get it all the way in. Okay, right there. Now turn the AC off. No, no, no. The button that says it should say off. Yeah, dude. It's off. Oh, okay. okay. Now go ahead and crank her all, all the way over till she starts. Right, right, right up. up, right up, man. <laughs> yeah. Cummins power, baby. You want to drive it? No. Oh, come on. You drove the Lincoln. If you can drive a Lincoln, you can drive this. Uh, uh, you could push Austin's car out of the way. Okay. Just uh, throw it in reverse. You won't even know it's back there. You probably won't know it's back there, but I still like that car. <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy? Um, before those batteries were replaced, mm -hmm. this odometer was always set like, okay, if you're driving it, this odometer was accurate. Uh -huh. But sitting at an idle, this would run 70 miles an hour when you weren't moving and the odometer it says 75 miles i've driven it like eight huh. this is seriously inaccurate here but now that you replace the batteries this is sitting at zero not moving this would normally be sitting at 70 miles an hour idling racking up miles that it wasn't even driving have you already stated what miles it has on it already or no nope i'm going to do a separate video uh regarding mileage discrepancies oh uh particularly with FedEx involved. 
um, FedEx odometer discrepancies, how to look for those and what to what to know before yeah. you buy one of these, and the the value of Carfax being able to let you know that you're buying something with potentially odometer fraud. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about that with Austin off camera. You guys don't get to know. You ready? <laughs> Buckle up, Nick. Throw it in reverse and go ahead and go. Hold on. <laughs> Austin's running out the back. <laughs> I ain't letting him drive this. Are you crazy? <laughs> Hell no. I'll still move my Hell car though. Hell no. You want to drive it? You could drive it. Ooh. You want to drive it? You don't need a special license to drive it. I won't even record you, man. That's tempting. I might do it and you might record it. Okay, well, if you want me to record it, I will. It, it's it's fun to drive, man. Like, it really is. With the doors open, it's it's almost like being on a motorcycle, except you feel way safer. In a big box. Yeah, way safe. And the view, you're looking down on it. It's like it's like looking at like this uh, on everyone. It's like, get out of my way. Oh, well, here, let me give you these before I try to take them home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I need those. Those are the only tools I have here. <laughs> I have no tools here. All right, guys, I'm going to close this up, and we're going to get on the road. Let Austin drive. Austin's first time driving the uh, the U-Haul. That's, wow. what, that's what I'm calling it. I'm gonna, I bought this to save myself five or $600 moving with a U-Haul truck. Yeah, you might do that. Now I can move over the next two months at my own pace. Easy. No mileage charges, and I could write the mileage off. This is really the sketchiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Backing up. Yeah, backing, backing up is really, really wild. You'll want to start turning like now. <laughs> it's literally like a game. It's, it's, it's pretty wild, man. The thing rides pretty, I mean, for what it is, it rides decent. Oh, it does. It does. It rides pretty decent. And don't forget to turn your headlights on. Oh, you already got them on. Yeah, they're on. You're good. I'm driving a bus. Yeah, <laughs> I like it personally. I've had uh, I've had several people ask me like, "What's it like to drive?" And I'm like, "It's actually, it's got good power." Yeah, listen to that turbo. Yeah. It's got great brakes. It drives straight as an arrow. Oh yeah. That damn door back there is is kind of That's annoying. A little annoying. Yeah, but other than that. Not bad at all. Look at that sunset out there, too. It looks nice. All right, I'm turning. Go for it. That That is sketchy. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. It's like driving a Jeep with the doors off. Yeah. Except this doesn't feel as safe as a Jeep. That's probably not <laughs> as safe as a Jeep. <laughs> Austin, tearing it up out here, man. Yes. Listen, we should do some burnouts. I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe if you soak the tires down with oil first. Maybe. I think this thing's got like 420 horsepower, something like that, 450 pound-feet of torque. It really does feel like it's driving a bus. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy driving it. It's not hard to drive. Oh. It's difficult to back up because you rely solely on your mirrors. Now, if you put a uh, wide-angle camera on the back, like a super wide-angle camera up high, oh, yeah. pointed down low, I think that would take all the guesswork out of it, man. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're riding. We're riding big. This is big boy right here. This is some big boy Big stuff. boy right here. If only it was four-wheel drive. You go off-roading. <laughs> Cletus, I want to bring this out there to the track. Oh, that's, I want to flip this over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got some good brakes. It's got some real good brakes, dude. I was dude. thinking it was going to be a little more squishy than that. Well, guys, I had an absolute blast making this video over the last two days. Um, really cool seeing Austin again. I mean, I'm telling you, Austin is a cool dude. If you don't know who he is yet, I'm sure most of you do. But if you don't, I'm going to have a link down below. Go check out Austin Carr on YouTube. He's working on an epic Ram Charger that he's got up and running. He's gotten a long way with it. I've been following that series, and I've really enjoyed it. I think you guys will, too. So go check out Austin Carr. And without Austin Carr, we wouldn't have a battery in that. We wouldn't have two batteries in that. And he got us a battery for a BMW. That's right. We got an E36 coming to the channel real soon. Stay tuned for that. I think you guys are going to enjoy that too. And the car you're sitting on is the 57 Plymouth Plaza. 
Guess what battery's in that? Austin Carr. Austin Carr. He does a lot to support this channel and help me out. I would appreciate if you guys go over there, subscribe to his channel, help him out too, man. He's a good dude. I want to see his channel succeed. He's definitely doing a great job over there. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And as I said earlier, if you have any information for me on this truck, please drop it below or send me an email, autoauctionrebuilds at gmail.com. All right. Now, since we put the new batteries in, a lot of things have changed. The speedometer no longer goes wonky sitting at 70 miles an hour when you're not moving. It, has a, it doesn't do that anymore. It just stopped magically with a new pair of batteries. Um, also, uh, the wristband doesn't work anymore. So now you can't open any of the doors with it. That's fun. That's fun because there are no keys to the doors on this. If anybody has any idea, any information on this system, where can I get one of these wristbands? How can I buy parts for this Stratech? Stratech, where, where, where do you buy the, the modules? How do you reprogram them? I need to know this stuff. And is there an adapter that transforms a Freightliner plug, the round plug, into an OBD2? Can I even read codes with my, oh, I, 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 I don't know. If you got any information for me, guys, please, please drop the information down below. This, this is big, physically and metaphorically, like it's big, it's, it's, this is a big deal. It's gonna be a lot of work. Um, I still don't know what we're doing with it. Other than the main reason I bought it was because we are closing on this new house, November the 8th. As of November the 8th, we can start moving. Now, I'll probably keep this house probably till next year. I don't want to be in a rush to move. This is a big property. We got a lot of stuff to move. And I thought that thing would be great for it. That thing would actually be perfect because instead of paying a U-Haul $600 or so to rent theirs with mileage and insurance and all the other crap that goes along with it, we can take our time with this and we can write off the mileage. Yeah, we could write off the mileage business expenses, right? Absolutely. freaking lutely So I thought, you know, we'll save ourselves $500, $600, and we'll spend uh, $5,000 on a FedEx truck. My fiance doesn't understand the logic, but I'm sure most of you guys out there, you get it, right? Yeah, you get it. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I had a great time making this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Auto Watch, and Rebuilds. And until next time, stay safe out there, right? I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.